This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for August 18, 2023, in the comprobing police killing of St. Andrew Mann. The Independent Commission of Investigations has commenced a probe into a police fatal shooting along Nets at Dale Drive at St. Andrew sometime before 3 p.m. yesterday. The news understands that the deceased man, known as Orin Wright or Tug Fashion, operated a business. A source close to the probe told the news that the man was reportedly on the police radar. Investigations are ongoing. Cleanup begins in Gregory Park community following arson attack. The National Solid Waste Management Authority on Thursday brought in heavy-duty equipment to help residents clear debris from last Saturday's terror and the arson attack along Walkers Avenue in Gregory Park, St. Catherine. Executive Director of the NSWME, Audley Gordon, said that the agency views the assistance as part of its corporate social responsibility efforts. And that's why we are here to help residents to get back on their feet by doing a big cleanup operation. We have bought in trucks and heavy duty equipment and personnel and just trying to ensure that we clean the space up so that they can get their lives back together. All of us feel the pain when things like this happen. We are part of a family, the Jamaican family. Twelve truckloads of rubble were removed from the site on Thursday and the NSWME said it expects it to remove another eight truckloads. More than 40 residents of Walkers Avenue were left homeless after gunmen torched several homes early Saturday morning. A taxi driver was killed in the attack. Member of Parliament for East Central St. Catherine, Alondo Terralong, has pledged that assistance will be provided to rebuild homes destroyed or damaged by fire in the Walkers Avenue arson attack. Mr. Terralong, who spoke with the news while in the community Thursday, said representatives from the Office of the Prime Minister's Who program will spearhead the construction. The urgent need right now is to clear the debris so that the HOPE team, they can do their work. The quantity surveyor was on spot today as well as the architects, as well as the engineers from the HOPE program. They are here. Um, some of the team members are still here as well because it is, it is not business as usual. You know, and we're not going to allow any Jamaicans to be, you mean, to be trapped in that kind of trauma or fear. We're going to help them rebuild. We provide them with assistance in terms of clothes, um, uh, monetary aid, um, food items as well. And, you know, Council Brown has assisted them in terms of work, you know, so that that will help them in terms of getting the materials together. We've also told them that more material will be provided. We're awaiting the fire report so that we can use the CDF, um, that fund, to assist them in terms of with more material to rebuild. And there will be a cleaning up exercise over that area tomorrow as well that Council Brown has been organizing. St. Mary Police Approving Mob Killing of Taxi Operator Accused of Rape The police are probing the suspected mob killing of a taxi operator accused of abducting and raping a 13-year-old child in St. Mary on Wednesday. Negos da Costa, 34, of Oxford in St. Mary, was chased and chopped to death by an angry mob. Investigators say about 3 p.m., the teenager boarded a vehicle driven by Mr. da Costa which was a destined for Arakabesa. Upon reaching Arakabesa Square, Da Costa reportedly diverted the route and drove to James Bond Beach, where he sexually assaulted the child. He was later spotted in Jackson River by residents and the family members who were searching for the child. Da Costa drove away with the child in a bid to elude her father and other family members who gave chase. The tire of his vehicle blew out. Da Costa exited the disabled vehicle but was chased and chopped to death by a mob in the vicinity of a ball field in Eden Park, Jacks River. The teenager was taken to hospital for medical examination. Prime Minister says no government member has so far indicated they are under IC probe. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he is continuing talks with Jamaica Labour Party parliamentarians to determine if they are being investigated by the Integrity Commission for Illicit Enrichment. There are reports that six parliamentarians are being investigated. Speaking to journalists Thursday afternoon in Clarendon, Mr. Holness said, 
None of those to whom he has spoken say they are being investigated. And, uh, you know, the question is still going to be asked. Are there members of my party who have been written to for um, this uh, crime of illicit um, enrichment? My straight answer is that I have asked as far and as wide, I have gotten that response from, from, from everyone, but as far as I have been told, no, people have been written to, as the Integrity Commission does almost daily. But I have not heard of anyone uh, in my political party being written to for uh, this matter of illicit enrichment. The government has been taken to task after it indicated its decision not to comment on matters being investigated by the Integrity Commission. Information Minister Robert Morgan made the declaration at Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing when asked whether any government member had been informed by the Integrity Commission that they are under investigation for illicit enrichment. Transparency Watchdog National Integrity Action has said the position taken by the government flies in the face of transparency. Speaking with the news, NIA Principal Director Daniel Archer said the parliamentarians and ordinary citizens should be treated equally. When an ordinary Jamaican is suspected by the Jamaica Constabulary Force and they believe that what you do is of some threat to national security or just mere suspicion and they place you in a database permanently, in perpetuity, you can't come off and you have what is called an adverse trace. How different it is, though, for our politicians when there are merely investigations, no convictions, no charges, but we can't even know their names. Ms. Archer said there is no validation for the protection of the reputation of these individuals, arguing that there is a lack of accountability among parliamentarians. But Mr. Holness has suggested that naming persons before investigations are complete could unnecessarily damage one's reputation. We are seeing that the Integrity Commission is acting. It is investigated. Therefore, we should allow the Integrity Commission to go through the process that we have duly passed in Parliament, that due process of investigating. When the investigations are at a point of maturity, are at a point where they are going to be brought into a public court, then by all means, that should be disclosed. Now, what happens to someone who is being investigated, for which the investigations turn out to be spurious, or there are no basis for that? Uh, is there a way to repair the damage done to that person? What I'm saying is that the issue has become a political weapon, a political tool, trying to score points with the public. Public is very smart. Public looks on and say, you know, look at these people talking now. Look at what they did when they were government. They were the same ones asking us not to say anything. And here they are now asking us to say something. We take a position that the law as it is established puts in place a gag clause. I don't like to use the term a gag clause. Uh, it, it seems as if there is something suspicious or something being hidden. But what it is, it is a protection for due process. That's what it is. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.